Do you? I have. Huh? You've been one of them open already. I waited about three months and you going to pack it up. Right, did you? Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. So okay. tell the people the story. Tell the good people the story why I had to wait so long on getting this. Well, Mark Kerr said he had a couple of bottles of porter for us. And then he said, just to nip over and collect them. And then we went into lockdown again. And I thought, oh, I, I don't want to be seen to be breaking the lockdown uh, when I'm up in Belfast uh, for the radio on Mondays. Uh, and I didn't call over and see him. And then I drove past this house a couple of times. There he is himself. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks there work. he is. There you go. Uh, I've already drunk mine. <laughs> Needless uh, no. to say. Uh, Marty's enjoying his tonight. There you yes. go. Uh, so... Uh, if you're watching, do say hello. Remember to share on Facebook to any groups you're involved in with whiskey. Also, watch on YouTube and subscribe on YouTube. It doesn't cost anything, but it helps us spread the good word about whiskey. Uh, everybody's getting in touch this evening already. Uh, we've got Mark, we've got Trevor, we've got Drop of the Irish, we've got William, we've got Shane, uh, we've got Michael Matthews, we've got Darren Barney Milligan, we've got Sherman Wright, we've got Julie. Remember to comment, like, and share. Say hello, spread the word. We have got a action-packed show tonight with at least, well, uh, a couple of guests and a whiskey tasting. We've uh, Honestly, uh, we'll run over tonight. We're just, I'm just going to let you all know we're going to run over a little bit tonight. But sure, we're all having a bit of crack and uh, a little bit of fun. This, I only noticed this is 10.8%. Yes, that's why I drank mine before we went live. Yes. All right, right. Well, by the time this is over, should there be a bit of slurry, wordy stuff, right? You'll understand why. So this, is a, this was a present from Mark Kerr at Farmageddon Baltic Porter. Aged in Dunville's yes. Irish whiskey casks. Yeah. It's, so it's pretty good. It is pretty good. It is, it is pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it is pretty good. So mm. uh, better say hello to these other people I've got in early. Sean, uh, Jonathan McCulloch as well. Uh, a drop of the Irish, 5% Eckenville in your bottle there, Marty. Yes, it's it's quite strong. It is. Uh, yeah. Michael Matthews, good week for the Irish, Cheltenham and the Aviva. Yes. What about Rachel Blackmore? What, what a woman. What that a woman. Was, that was oh, brilliant. And I had, I had her in the Gold Cup. I had her in the Gold Cup and she, if I had another half a furlough and she'd, she'd have won it. Oh, brilliant. All Fantastic. Right. Uh, so there you go. A lot of people having a very good week. I imagine you did if you were... Uh, back in the Irish at the uh, at Cheltenham Festival. But, uh, yeah. well, we're back in whiskey tonight. We're back in it all the way. We have uh, a couple of these to get through. A couple of people should have, uh, well, a lot of people should have got these. I think uh, more than two or three have told me they've got them. So, Put like this. they're on the way. I know, I know there's a few people. I know one guy who got back to me and said, is the tasting tonight or next week? And I said, it's tonight. And he said... Oh, I forgot to go to the post office because he's a post PO box. <laughs> and so he forgot to go and left it. Oh, so right. I know we have. Uh, guys, I know there's a couple of people still waiting in there, but it will come and you can enjoy it then. So hopefully you enjoy it less than the arse. Whitter away and you'll get to taste it. So Okay, no problem. So uh, what's up first tonight, Dan Money? We go to Whiskey News. <laughs> now. New releases and new things, new whiskey releases and things being laid down and so on and so forth. And first off, we have Dunville's 1808. Our friends down in Kirkcubbin, down at Eckenville, have released this this week. And we have obviously got the, the porter to go along with it. And that's actually what I have in this glass. And it's, it's, nice. It's, it's nice enough, yeah. Now, yeah. this is a blend of pot still malt and green whiskies, and it joins all the other offerings from the, the, the Eglinville guys. This, however, is slightly different in that it's an entry level, it's entry level offering. It's £33 a bottle. Now, I bought this when it went on sale at the start of the week, and it was an absolute pleasure to actually just be able to go on at your leisure, click, 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 and buy something. Without having to say, right, five minutes to go, right, oh, 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 click, oh, shit, it's, it's, it's somebody's basket, try and get it three before, it go. ah, go on, right, okay. It was just a pleasure to just get a reasonably placed whiskey, just go straight through, buy it, 
and a couple of days later, it turns over your door. Ta da! Okay, what more can you say? So, well, Graham Potter a... reckons that the porter's kicking in already, Marty, with you. No, that's that's that's. <laughs> that's I've only poured it. It's only been poured, but it was it. Uh, it was uh, a pleasure to do that. Um, it's actually what I have in the glass, as I say. Um, it's very light on the nose. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to give a wee review of it during the week. So yeah, as I say, thirty three pounds a bottle. I think there's lots of the chasing the high end single cask stuff, but this needs to be coming here too. You know, they need the entry levels and things that are slightly different. Speaking of high end, high end entry or high end premium stuff, Bally Keef Distillery have launched their first pot still whiskey. Now, this is sort of snuck down below the radar, if you like. There hasn't been a huge bit of fanfare about this. This is 450 euros a bottle. But that's not cheap. It's, it's not cheap. But this is this is limited. There's only let me think now, seven casks released of this. Uh and there's 500 cask strength bottles. Now they're only available at the winecenter.ie website and the distillery website as well. It's Ballykeith is a fairly small farm, single farm distillery. They are filled to glass. They do everything themselves. And for your €450, Euro, you get a certificate of authenticity, uh, the, your single cask bottling, individual cask and bottle number on each label. It's a hand engraved bottle by Kilkenny Crystal and two Kilkenny Crystal hand cut and hand engraved tumblers. Now that looks like a mock up. That doesn't look like a real picture. That picture. No, that's a that's a mock up. There's other pictures there, Justin. There's other pictures. Yeah. Oh, there, yeah. there's a real one with a, a real man, actually. A real human being. This is Morgan Gill, who owns the owns the farm. Well, the, the man of the his wife between the whole lot of them, the family farm. Um, so this has come out. They also do just the bottle, and it's not at cask strength, that's 46%. Uh, for 195 euro. Now, there's only 700 of those done, so well done on them. However, I just want to say it's a little bit confusing when you go onto the uh, uh, wine center IE and it, it says the ABV is, and I quote, 59.5% ABV, comma, 63.2%. Okay. So, not 100%, not 100% sure which one it is, right. but. I don't think too many of them will be open to tell you the truth. So they're they will be collectible. They're still available. Big investment um, opportunity, Marty. Yeah. Well, the way Irish whiskey prices are going, Justin, you'll you'll never lose any money there. You know, I mean, you'll not lose anything on them. Um, and I would imagine they'll be collectible enough. They Bally Keith pride themselves on being the most environmentally friendly distillery. You know, they 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 take they spend a lot of money getting their environmental credentials. Uh, there's no waste comes off the farm. The, the, their own cows are fed, the, the, the draft and, and the pot ale and stuff. You know, so it, it, it's, they're trying to do everything as environmentally friendly as, as possible. So good on them, well done, congratulations. Uh, so that was good. Where are we heading now then? Now we're heading up the, the West Coast over to Galway and the Mickle Distillery. Down in Salt Hill. Yes. They have laid down the first whiskey in Galway in a century. Have they? And who made this be? <gasps> there he is. Hello. How are you, folks? Uh, we're good. We're good. We are just celebrating the fact that you guys have laid down the first whiskey in Galway in a century. So That's right. Every- yeah, we've 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 been celebrating ourselves, I suppose, um, uh, tr- trying the new make that's uh, going into casks, you know. But uh, yeah, we're thrilled to, to have made the announcement, and uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, so, Michael Distillery was actually started in 2016, and uh, you know, ever since I started making poutine and later uh, making gin, it, it was always the the dream, you know, to be able to to lay down whiskey. And it's funny, just um, I'm going to stop talking now in a second, but I just want to, I suppose, um, 
explain, you know, from, from, from where we are, uh, we're from Connemara originally, and uh, we have been distilling poutine over 170 years and uh, for six generations. But one of the things I suppose that people might find interesting is that even to, to this day, a lot of the older generation around here would still refer to uh, what we mostly call poutine as fushke. And I'm, I'm sure as you you all know, uh, fushke is the the Irish word, um, you know, for whiskey, basically before it yeah. became anglicized. So the way they'd actually uh, call, uh, par you know, the, 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 the legal whiskey is they'd call it by parliament whiskey. So in a way, we're kind of continuing uh, the, the, the old tradition, but albeit put it into casks. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because a lot of people, I've, I've been telling this, I've been banging this drum for a long time, telling people that pot gene is always seen as being the inferior product. And it's, in lots of ways, it's not. In lots of ways, it's a fabulous thing. But having whiskey is another string to your bow. Um, well done. Congratulations. Thanks a million. Now, we're going, we're we, going to hear more from him in a couple of weeks, I believe, Mario. I, th I think I think it warrants we get a, a, a bit more of an insight into what's going on down in Galway. Uh, and we'll have a, a great a great conversation with Porrick at some other time. Now, in terms of what you're laying down, you're not laying down big volumes, Porrick. Sure you're not. To be honest, I'd say we're probably one of the smallest, if not the smallest, uh, whiskey distillery in the country at the moment. Uh, so we're capable uh, running five days a week. Uh, we um, were able to lay down up to 200 uh, litres uh, of whiskey in a week. So in other words, one standard, you know, um, ex-bourbon cask or, or so. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's small scale. But, of course, we do have other plans for expansion, which uh, we will elaborate on in due course. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sure there's lots of exciting things happening and uh, there bigger is. plans to come on. And uh, we'll, is, we'll, yes. we'll find out what they are uh, in the not too distant future, I'm sure. But honestly, it's, been, it's great having you on. Um, I, I, I love hearing about people realising their ambitions and getting things done. Um, whenever I, I heard during the week that Michael had got it laid down, I was, I was impressed, you know. Yeah, well, thanks a million. And and look, you know, it's not just me. I know that people probably see me an awful lot of the time. We'll say uh, whether it's in social media or whatnot or at trade events. But uh, there's a there's a team there. Uh, my brother is the head distiller. Uh, we have Mark McLaughlin there, you know, who's recently joined the team. I don't know if he's on the call there. Uh, so he's looking after marketing and. Uh, you know, I suppose brand development, and then my business partner, last but certainly, certainly not least, uh, Ross Tobin, who uh, always uh, wants to stay away from the camera, any of the limelight. <laughs> uh, so he's quite happy for me to, you know, uh, be be the kind of uh, public facing person uh, from the business, and uh, that's that's I suppose uh, the way it works. That's it's, it's funny because there always has to be. People try a and do lots of things the themselves, mask, Marty, and then there man. has to be other people that you have to have to end up. Uh, well, somebody has to take over this. I can't. I can't be the the pretty boy face of of Michael Distillery all the time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know. Uh, you know, it's funny actually. Um, the photo during the week, we'll say that went out. Uh, my brother was in it as well, so it was great to see that bit more mix, uh, you know, yeah. and uh, showing the, the, the wider team and uh, hopefully the team as well. That's the plan anyway. We'll be growing over the the coming weeks and months. Uh, you know, to help us uh, realise, you know, uh, more of uh, the, the longer term ambitions. Brilliant. Listen, congratulations and thanks for joining us. There's always a good comedian on tonight. Uh, really <laughs> Here, here's Seamus Tobin said, tasted his, his potching in a chemist in Dublin. There you go. <laughs> That's the guy to go after. <laughs> I, I tell you one thing, some very high end chemists in Dublin. <laughs> yeah, and Michael Maggs so. is saying, Did you need a prescription, CMS? Yeah, he had to pay 100 euros for one. Right, good night. God bless. <laughs> catch you again right. in a couple Thank of you. weeks. All right. We'll catch Cheers. up with you again soon. Thanks. I look forward, uh, look forward to it, guys. Thanks a million. Bye bye. So, so that's that, that brilliant. I love hearing people getting, you know, <laughs> ambitions realized, you know. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. There, there we go. Uh, so, uh, What's next tonight? Because, well, there's a, a an international or a national new make next. Well, we're what we're doing is we're heading stateside, Justin, because the O'Shaughnessy Distillery is where former Irish distillers master distiller Brian Nation went. And after he departed, uh, 
Middleton and had it had it stateside, he went to the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul's. Now, the distillery isn't open yet. It's still being built. It's uh, It'll be summer 2021, as you can see in the, the logo. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. They said that they're going to use 100% American grains with Irish techniques. Now, they're using a mash bill of malted and unmalted triple distilled. Okay, no, they're doing the malted and unmalted triple mash bill, okay. triple distillation, and then laying it down in virgin American oak. It sounds very Irish pot still to me, but they're not allowed to call it pot still. We'll get another story later on. Okay. Now, they've made a video of the, the building. Um, you've got it there. I think I do. Is it the one which is like a Hollywood DreamWorks sequence? Is it? It's, yeah. It is fabulous. Uh, so if you uh, if you want to play that, put it up on full screen. Let everybody see it because it's it's really impressive. Oh well, day here here we go. Hopefully it starts at the start. Oh, look at this here. I'm flying around. I'm in virtual reality, Marty. Shush. Did you see this light fixture? Oh, I love it. It reminds me of all the copper piping that goes into our distillation process. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> These people are Americans. They are. It's funny that they're in America. Hmm, <laughs> 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 stings the nostrils. There's nothing in it yet. I don't know what it's stinging. By the way, this isn't virtual reality. Somebody actually flew into a drone. I just think this is fabulous. It's the guy who held the key to the spirit. You'll see the shadow and what makes the spirit the safe so special is it's here we get to the heart of the distillate. Look at that there, the lockbox. Love them. Would you make some pit? It is some mad drone skulls. Oh, no, Touch your head. These fire pits are going to be great. I'm sure that's against health and safety that way. We'll make that happen. I love this view. The heart of this distillery, it's in these copper pot stills. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. That's as well, to Look. be fair. Yes. I mean, I, I I watched that during the week and I was I was blown away. It's, they don't get that in Cork. Now you have to <laughs> nobody, nobody in Cork can play a drone like that. Uh, <laughs> fabulous. Well, so that's, there's, there's a few boys around the country can fly drones like that. There. You know? Well, put it like this, he, he's. Uh, I, I saw that during the week and I thought that's that's just amazing looking. So uh, they're going to make basically they're going to make Irish pot still whiskey in America. But it can't be called Irish pot style whiskey. So it'd be interesting to see what way they do it. But no, uh, okay. well done. And I mean, Brian Nation, his reputation precedes him, you know. So good. Yeah, there's uh, Mark Kerr saying, impressed I am. He's talking like Yoda. <laughs> he must have had one of those porters tonight. <laughs> and then five pots, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's going to be, they're going to be distilling a lot of stuff. So yeah, I would imagine they're paying Brian Nation a considerable amount of money. Yeah. to be there but no it, it looks fabulous and good on them they now they have the keepers heart cast society for anybody who wants to sort of buy into it you can go on and go to the website and check it out so best of luck to them good on them well but now we come back home again justin and it? it's I can't, I can't stand this show i can't stand it prison break prison, prison break. prison break i can't stand it. it's awful uh, <laughs> Prison Break was all right up until they, they, they escaped them went to Panama and then because the guy refused to sit for four hours every day getting the tattoos done he was wearing a duffel coat and <laughs> walking around Panama <laughs> at about 45 degrees and 100% of humidity and him wearing a duffel coat but no <laughs> this is uh, the Crumlin Road distillery the Common Road Jail, sorry if anybody who's watching this doesn't know what we're talking about. This is a former jail that was built in the 1840s, um, designed by Sir Charles Lanyon. They've been 
This is where the get get if you got caught doing the pod chain. <laughs> yeah, this is where you get on your skills. <laughs> so A Wang in this has been proposed as a distillery for a number of years now, and it all fell through, and there's a, all stuff going on behind the scenes. Finally, this week, they've been granted planning permission. £25 million pound project. They're going to attract, if they meet the figures, 125,000 visitors a year. So that's a lot of people. Um, and they're going to, obviously, they're going to create a lot of jobs. So that finally getting that, they're a great attraction. But it already is a big visitor attraction because they, listen, they hope to do a hostel as well at some point, don't they? They've there's a whole pile of stuff. Put it like this: if you if you haven't done the Crumlin Road tour, I thoroughly recommend it. Justin and I have done it. I don't know many times, and I I think it's fabulous. It's great. Yes, I see, like because we usually get a free meal and a drink while they're doing the tour, <laughs> so you don't have to do no work, but you still get paid and you get free food. <laughs> there you go. That. No. This, this is the Belfast Distillery Company. And they're also running a program, uh, a competition called, uh, it's a story slam for storytellers, poets, and spoken word performers. Okay. Now, is that us, Marty? <laughs> it could be. You know, you never know, Justin. We could be good and for it. Uh, yeah. Now, what they're doing is, it's hashtag is share your comeback. And they want, and I quote, uh, in celebration of its unlikely return after 90 years, McConnell's Irish whiskey is making its comeback and we're inviting storytellers and Irish whiskey lovers alike to tell their story and celebrate our never give up ethos. McConnell's Irish whiskey will host a competitive story slam show case showcasing the theme comeback underdogs and long shots. And you can win uh, all expenses paid trip to Los Angeles for a whiskey tasting with this guy, whose name <laughs> his name name eludes me just currently. Uh, so yeah, if you go on, you have to submit a video to YouTube or Vimeo. Uh, if you go on, you can read about it on the website. It's McConnell's Irish Whiskey dot com. But it'd be nice. I mean, I love the way they're offering a free trip to Los Angeles when they won't let us in at the minute. <laughs> you know, but you get the idea. Go I've on been and have to LA at some spot, Marty. Uh, I, I would say, Justin. I would say you were trying to drown on those those beaches so that Pamela Anderson could go running out. I'll be ready, coming to get you. I went to Catalina Island on on a sea cat, and it was fabulous. We went into this bar, right? I'm not joking you. Uh, she said, "What you? What one do you want?" And she says, "Can you come right and get it down yourself?" And I, I got it down myself. And uh, pour yourself a drink there. So I poured myself a drink. And I says, "How much is it?" She says, "Oh, there's no charge." And I went, "Okay." And I had a, <laughs> did you hey, take the clothes off for that? No, or no, no. I, I thought it was that sort of show. I, I, I and then at the end of that, I says, "How much?" She says, "Oh no, it's all sorted. It's all settled." I says, "Is it? Are you sure?" Did yeah, you pick yeah, up a no, sugar, mummy? No worries. I don't know what it was. But anyway, we had to get on the boat. We didn't have to pay for anything. It was like it was like being James Bond walking in and ordering a martini and never having to pay for it. But anyway, uh, weird yeah. stuff. Great place. Lovely place. Get to Catalina if you're ever in LA. It's worth the trip. Yeah. No. Uh, this, this, is, this shows you your inherent bias. Everybody has inherent bias, by the way, right? I, I always think of myself as being fairly carefree and liberal and sort of dead. I actually turned out I'm really not. Most of the time I'm really not. But I read this story earlier on, and it's the Scottish Whiskey Association, right? Along with White and Mackay. So one of the real big hitters, Scott, Scotch whiskey. And they filed legal notice on the Macaloni distillery, which is called the... <laughs> the Victoria Caledonian whiskey because they've used this branding Macaloni's Caledonian whiskey, right? Now, at the bottom of the bottle, it says Canadian whiskey. So if you bring it up full screen, people might be able to see it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard, hard to see, but maybe you'll see it. It says Canadian Island Single Malt Whiskey. Okay. Now, I read this and I thought to myself, it's a bit hard. Okay, they use the word Caledonian. Yeah, yeah. But 
you know, they're Scottish guys. It's yeah. maybe a bit much to, to be hitting them over the head with that. However, I then went to their website and it turns out that maybe the Irish Whiskey Association might be having to have a wee word with them as well because they have this bottle which is called Oaken Pochin. Now, to use the word Caledonian is a little bit cheeky. It implies it's Scotch. Yes, yes. But it's not. Yeah. But the word Pochin can only be made in Irish. It's a protected geographical indicator. So it's a bit like Parma ham. You can't make Parma ham in, in Brashean or, or as Balamina. It has to be made in Parma. $14 a ball? Put it like this, the way Irish whiskey prices are at the minute, that's, that's, that's dirt cheap. No, I'll read you out what it says in the blurb, just in case anybody can't see that. Traditionally distilled using Irish methods and matured in select STR, shave, toast and rechar, Portuguese red wine baroques. This is the first ever triple distilled pot still whiskey spirit in Canada. Hmm. And one of the first outside of Ireland. So it goes on, it talks about how it's full bodied and so on and so forth. Now, I, I was very sort of nonchalant when it was to do with Scotland. You know, whenever it was the Scottish people and they turn around and Nick say... Nick Virgin will be hunting you, Marty. No, well, she's not hunting me. She, she has other problems to go on at the minute, uh, Justin. I'm not worried too much. Nicola will be all right where she's at. But the thing is, I was a bit sort of nonchalant. I guess they're getting, a, a, you know, the SWA and White Mackay are getting a bit hot and bothered over nothing. And then I saw this and I thought, yeah, what? That, you know, that's Irish. That's hard. You know, you can't... And, no, the, the, that's that's I think overstepping the mark. Um, I think I think the Irish Whiskey Association would really need to be pulling them on this because you can't you can't take that. No, it was a wee bit. I, I find that a wee bit uh, too too too. Well, it was too cheeky. It's too cheeky, isn't it? That that would be the word for it, wouldn't it? Well, it's basically a, a, a stealing a, a a trademark symbol. You can't do that, you know. I mean, if you try to steal Mickey Mouse. Disney will come and <laughs> do you over like you wouldn't believe. I had a conversation with the son a couple of weeks ago when I, I was talking about Las Vegas and uh, we'd watched uh, Casino or something. And I said, oh, the mafia got kicked out when, when Disney arrived and, and, and Mickey Mouse arrived. And he says, what do you mean? I says, well, D Disney arrived, so the mafia had to get out. I said, and I have to explain to him, Yes, the mafia may kill you, but Disney will really make a mess of you. <laughs> Disney will strip you and future generations of your kids of every penny you ever have. Yeah, the, yeah. The, well, people people are are justified to guard their copyright, really, are. Yeah, the, well, I mean, we're talking to, we're talking to guys from the Mickle Distillery who are proud of their pot chain, they're proud of their tradition, they're proud of the ancestral heritage of it, and et cetera, et cetera. And here's a Canadian company who's just stepped in. And, taking it and they use pot still and triple distill and Irish methods and all this kind of stuff and well they're Scottish in Canada so yeah you know you think you think of these fake things and you think of you know I, don't, I hate saying it but I mean you know the cheap Chinese stuff uh, you know Nick trainers and Abidas trainers and all this kind of stuff but no here here you have people in Canada doing pretty much exactly the same thing so yeah no I uh, we're halfway through the hour. We're, we're definitely going to overrun tonight. Uh, we are. Remember to comment, like, and share. Tell your friends. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, ask your smart speaker to play the uh, Irish Whiskey with Free podcast. And, uh, well, uh, now is the time of the night where we take a step back a couple of weeks and we're going to try some... Kennedy Castle. Kennedy Castle. Thank you to Kennedy Castle and Barry. Uh, lovely guy that he is. Sent these out. Mine only arrived this morning, uh, uh, which was lovely. <laughs> I was lucky enough. I was sort of a little bit anxious that we weren't going to have them. But no, no, they arrived in time. Um, and yeah, so we'll open up. We'll go for the Dapper Blend first. I think we'll go with the Dapper Blend. Dapper Blend first. Okay, so if you've got this at home, are you going to pour the whole lot in, Marty, are you? 
Go go harder, go home, Justin. Go harder, go home. Okay, go harder, go home. I just realised today, by the way, buddy, it's a year since I moved into this house. Exactly a year. I moved. <laughs> I moved in here a year ago. Right. So about that. Yep. Just moved in. Have we been doing the show a year then, or is it nearly, yeah. nearly a year? Nearly a year. Feels longer right enough, but no. It, it does feel longer. <laughs> Do you, want to, do you want to know what number of show this is this year alone? I don't know. I have no idea. It's short. It's show 24 this year alone. Well, wow. You know? Now, the Dapper Blend. It's aged in virgin American oak. And it is double distilled malt. Uh, and then it's triple distilled malt, fully matured in Chablis wine casks. Uh and then it's aged in virgin American oak. Right, five. Wrong, 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 wrong image. I've loaded the wrong image there. Don't worry about it. I'll get the right image as we talk about this. No. Let it sit for another minute. So it says the result is a complex Irish whiskey blend dressed for any occasion, classically neat, well groomed, on the rocks, elegant in a cocktail, or dashing with a mixture of your choice. Now the name that or blend, as we heard a couple of weeks ago, comes from Ronan O'Callaghan. And the, he, the, the story that Barry told the other week. So you can go and find that out. Uh, and we can give it a little nose. I quite like that. That, to me. Yeah, I like that too. It's, it's very, very, very. It's got the... It's got, that toffee notes definitely there coming through. Is that that's actually that's actually aged. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. The virgin oak has sort of turbocharged that a little bit. And what I mean by that is the virgin oak, because there's been nothing in before it, uh this probably isn't that old. A, a whiskey, but the the virgin oak has pushed it a little bit further because there's nothing. We're we're used to getting bourbon casks, and bourbon has taken stuff out of the wood, and then it's also added stuff to the wood. So when the spirit goes in, the interactions dulled a little bit, it's changes. So I'm going to say the virgin oak aged this a lot quicker than a bourbon cask would have done. So you're getting, you're getting those sweet notes, that slightly toasted note, the wood and the oaks there, and that toffee. And that's that. Uh, there's but there's a slight, slight green note there, as well. So I'm going to say that it's like a pear note that's lifting it a little bit. You know, like fresh getting, cut. I'm getting fresh a, cut nut, pears. a nuttiness. I am actually getting the nuttiness from it. But you, can you get that pear note where it's like fresh fruit? It's lifting it a little bit. Possibly. I can see how you'd be getting that. But that there is a very, 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 very pleasant drink indeed. That is. Yeah, that's that. I'm going to say now, for a blend, that that's 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 excellent. That is really good. That that, hmm. I, I'm going to say that virgin oak has really really shoved that along, along the along the path. I must. I have it here. I must just check what price that is, because. <laughs> what are you doing? That it's, isn't a, a polo mint in it. That's my light ring. You can see reflecting in it when it's. Clear. I don't want to see your ring in a glass. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be getting a Zuckerberg. It's my light ring reflecting. It's the thing that makes me light up. Like that. That is. That is. Uh, that's good. That's. That uh, is I just. Good. I just checked the price. It's forty. It says in the US it's forty-two dollars. So that must be about what. Thirty-five pound or thereabout. Yes. And for thirty-five pound, that's that's it. That is really good. I I'm getting good at this because I told you I thought it was good when I took a sneaky nip when it came in the post this morning. 
There you go. There's the verdict. Yeah. Graham Horner was getting toasted peanuts. Yes, yep. that's exactly it. He also says, is that to give you pretty eyes, Justin? <laughs> no, it's 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 to reflect off my glasses. Did you see that there? Do you see the two O's? I look like a look like a cat's eye. You see my light ring there? Um, but yes, it is good. It is that good. That is good. I'm gonna say on the palate, there's a there's a nice golden syrup there. And and a nice wee touch of fresh mint is coming through there. That's totally different than I thought it was going to be. That's totally different than I thought it was going to be. And right. I'm pleasantly, I'm surprised by that because yeah. I thought with the Chablis wine casks, it would have had, I would have had a, a, a bit more of a sort of fresh. And I said to Barry at the time that that little acidic thing, and I know he said it wasn't, but you're sort of thinking, well, he's going to say that. I, I, I tell you, I'm, I'm impressed by that. I'm yes. really impressed by that. Yes. Yes. Uh, there you go. There's uh, Darren Barney Milligan. It, it's a great blend. Wouldn't have guessed it. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. Marty Rates blends, uh, you know, they're, they're new out yeah. and it, it's, no, it's no, going to do the business, this, isn't it? Justin, blends blends are a very old they're, they're Try and test it. And I, I read someone, someone said in a post that I seen the other day that blends are struggling. Blends are, are, are you know, with all the <laughs> blends still make up about ninety percent, <laughs> still make up about ninety percent of whiskey sales. So, yeah, blends aren't struggling. There's just more people buying more whiskey. There we go. And, uh, well, it's a, a very drinkable blend. That's very drinkable. Yes, it is very drinkable. Ha hats off to the guy. That's it's actually got a really good mouthfeel. It is. It is. After t the after effects are, are are excellent too. I'm sorry I didn't get some peanuts to go with this. This is good. Again, that that little that little sprig of mint in there, it's just coming through. That pops through. It's, that's that's I I'm really impressed with that. I really you, am. You don't really need anything in that to open it up, right? No, you don't need anything in that. that. You don't need anything in that. Um, yeah. That that, that that's superb. That yeah. is superb. That. I am really impressed with that. Yeah. As I say, it's it's got a nice, fr <laughs> it's got a nice fresh. Sir, it's got a syrupy, light syrupy note to it. It's and that that little minty thing that's coming through there is just ah yeah, really really nice, really nice. Mm hmm. And there's lots of people say stuff about whiskies whenever they say about oh this does that and this does this to it and you get it and it's not really. But whenever they say that the double distilled adds body. That's really what's given you your mouth feel. And honestly, I, I, I'm really impressed with that. Yeah, hats off. Well done. Yep. Very, very good. Very well. Very good. Very good. Now, it's not just uh, whiskey that they do. They're obviously, it's Kennedy Castle Fine Irish Spirits. Obviously, this is the Irish whiskey. But they've, they've other things coming out as well, Murray, don't they? Yeah, they do. Uh, they have. They have their uh, the cider cast one coming. They mentioned. Um, I've tried a couple of cider cast whiskies, and I, I really, really wanted to like the Tullamore Dew one because I thought it's very, very green, very good, uh, very light and estery. That's what the, the, the sort of term you would use for something being uh, fruity, but it didn't work at all. Um, it really didn't for me. Uh, so it will be interesting to see what the, this guy, based on what they've done with that that we're playing. Um, yeah, it, uh, it'll yeah. be something special, I think. Well, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Um, and I, and then, I love the idea of these done. botanicals as well. You see, I'm not a massive juniper berry fan, so it's, uh, unfortunately for me, I I not a big juniper berry fan. So, when it comes to gins, I, I, I find it a little bit mm, just just sometimes I find that gins can be uh, just too piney and and sort of chemical for me in some ways. Uh, I know loads of people love them, and I can't drink a gin if 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 I have the right tonic water and stuff in it as well. You know, I can't certain ones I can't have, but. 
Graham Horner's asking. I think Barry's watching tonight. Uh, Barry, if you if you see that, Graham's asking anywhere to get it over here. Yet, I would imagine Graham's on North America, Canada, or America. No, Graham. Graham, I I sent I Barry sent. I should say Barry sent Graham. I can't remember exactly where Graham is, but is uh, is he in England? Is he in England? Can't remember. Uh, well, there's, there's, I can't remember. There's several thousand people regularly engage with this show, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind very of... hard to keep track. Always put your name in town in your message in case we don't know who you are. Don't 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 take it personally. It's just there's no way of possibly remembering or looking everybody up. You know, uh, Graham. I think Bar Barry was the one that said he, he had some distribution deals in place. Did he? Did he? Barry. Barry said, uh, "Oh, he's an arts. Yeah, and you can oh. get it up here. Uh, you can even get it. You can even buy it online." And go on, go on to uh, KennedyCastleSpirits.com. Yeah, and you can pick it up there. Yeah, <laughs> I thoroughly recommend that. I think that's, I think that's fabulous. Yeah. We'll, well have done. To move on, otherwise we'll never get the show over tonight. Because because we could, I, I could just sit and drink this all night. Actually, yeah. Okay. You see now, now I've finished that there. The, now that I've finished that, there's a boiled sweet. It's so, fragrant. It's way fragrant. at the it way is. at the finish. There's is. a boiled it sweet. Is. There's nope. Stanley ah. Song saying it's lovely. It look, yeah. it does. It looks lovely. It well, looks lovely. Well, it's got colour to it, but um, if I had to guess, I think they've probably put a little bit of colour in it. But it's it's there's a real there's a reason they use colouring and stuff, and it's it's basically to 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 create a a, a uniform piece of packaging. And there's nothing wrong with a little bit of colour. It's preferable not to have it in it if you're using sort of high-end single malts. But when you're when you're doing a sort of I don't know thirty-five pound blend, it's very difficult to keep it a uniform colour. And if you walk in and see one's darker than that one, and you know batch changeovers and stuff, and you go, oh, that's a different colour than the other bottle I had," you know. So uh, yeah. Mm. So we shall pour the ten-year-old. All right, okay. Set that aside. Now, I've brought this up. The 10 year old is matured in American oak casks, blended, then returned to a European oak Oloroso sherry butt for a final year, allowing the flavours to marry. Like autumn leaves. Now, they're getting all poetic on us here. Barry's getting all poetic on us. Like autumn leaves on an Irish evening, a woody oak nose combines with the sweetness of dried fruit and butterscotch to crown a satisfying taste experience with spiced walnuts. Sherry and tobacco rain, a buttery cream lingers as a hint of vanilla finishes this timeless encounter. Barry, Barry must have enjoyed, Barry got the, the, the poets in for that one. Well done, well done, Barry. I'm a huge poetry fan, by the way. Just as Justin well knows, I'm a poetry fan. No. Was was Graham on the list? Was he? Was he on the list? I think Barry says he sent sent them Tuesday during the whole country stopping for two days to drown the shamrock. There must have been a delay. Yeah, the, Barry. Honestly, the couriers. Uh, Barry, the, the, it doesn't make any difference what you do. People send them months in advance, and people right. still don't get it until afterwards. Oh. They, they eventually show up. Otherwise, two show up at my house. <laughs> oh, all I would say is. Ask Stanley Sung about his bootleg like, Star Wars figures and how long it, how long it took him to get that. Uh, anyway. No. Right. On to the, the ten year old. Stuart, Stuart Quayle, have you just tuned in? Do you not know? It's from Kennedy Castle no. in the Sleeve Boom Mountains. There you no. go. Justin, Justin. Oh, oh, where's the liquid from? Oh, yes. Yes. Because Kennedy Castle don't have their own distillery. So it's that Stuart is asking a perfectly reasonable it's, question. It's a secret. It's a secret. I think I preferred the blend on the no. nose. You don't, you don't compare things. Opposite, yes. yes. Okay. You know, yeah, that's not really what you need to do. There's two different experiences. I like Coke and Pepsi equally under circumstances. Pepsi always goes better with fish and chips. Coke is a better mixer. 
Oh, yes. I like the way you're taking this to another level, Justin. You know, you're elevating the stuff. I Pepsi goes with a fish supper. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, we're tasting single malt whiskey. Ten, year, ten years this is married in a cask. This is distilled with love and care. And then a cask, a wooden cask from a tree that was hundreds of years old, crafted and it shaved after millennia of expertise in a, in a cask. This then spent ten years resting relaxing in the air, you know, slowly evaporating, taking on all the things, and you've equated it to a Pepsi and a fish supper, right? Do you, under, do you understand why I do the whiskey stuff and <laughs> you do the technical stuff? I need a fish supper this, this point of the night. <laughs> I made you a kebab the other night. I know. I wish I had a fish and chips. Mm. And right. a Mexican well, tonight. I wish I had fish and chips tonight again too. Right on the nose. There's a fair, yeah. fair amount, fair amount of wood there. There is. Yeah, wouldn't necessarily on the nose. Wouldn't say on the nose. There's an awful lot of the the sherry sweetness. I haven't tasted it yet, but I don't think there's an awful lot of the sherry sweetness coming on the nose. I'll, I'll I will go for the dried fruit, um, sultanas. You're sort of you're possibly possibly dried apricot. Yeah, I'll go with the apricot. Yeah. So it's it's a, it's a fruity it's a fruity smell, fruity nose. I wouldn't say it's very heavy on the on the nose, if I'm honest. So what did it say? It was a European oak, American oak blend, and then return to European oak and sherry about for the fall final year. No. Can I try it yet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bloody hell, that's good too. That's that's good. That's good. Um, oh, the finish is nice in this. There's a nice finish in that. Um, yeah. On the palate, it's coming in on the palate. Quite a lot of wood, and the sweetness. Mm. The sherry's coming in on the on the, on the palate, but on the finish, there's there's nice butter coming in there. There is. There's definitely that, that lovely rich buttery note that's there. Lots of nice fresh fruits. And then towards towards the end, I, I say this note to people, and some people don't they they perceive it as something slightly different than myself. There's a, a sort of meat taste coming in at the very end of that. That that's good. That is good. It's good. If I'm honest. I'm more impressed with the blend. I thought the the the, the blend is fabulous. Mm -hmm. No, mm. I, I, you know, first first out, and you might think the blend. I, I I think the blend's better, but th that there. Uh, oh, that, that <clears throat> this is this is this is good. That but is if good. That if is I was good. if I was spending my money on either of them, I'd buy the blend, and I've that's actually, the truth. I've actually noticed that the jury here is. Well, it's it's pretty honest, and it's uh, it's not for what I would call forgiven. But nobody has said they don't like it tonight. That's no. watching. Nobody that's has a... said that they prefer something else over it. Everybody's I... saying positive comments. There you go. Bird ends and finish, uh, yeah. Marty. Yes, yes. But that's what that's what I mean. But uh, see, there's lots of people get very confused about that that, that um, black and meat. Black and meat actually, if it's done right, is sweet. Do you know what I mean? If yes. seared seared yes. steak's yes. sweet because yes. it's yes. burning the fat and it's, it's caramelizing yes. those sugars, and that's that's what I mean whenever I say meat. It's got that meaty quality at the very end of it. Um, I I I'd be honest with you. You know, Justin, I try and be fairly positive about reviews and stuff. You know, yeah. I, I I like because I understand that loads of people have passion and stuff. Um. 
I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with those, and I'm really impressed with the blend. I thought that blend's superb. Thought it was really, really good. Yes, really very, good. Very good. So well done, well done, Barry. Thank you very much for uh, sending us up, Barry Connor from Kennedy Castle Fine Spirits. Those are illustrious products, and we look forward to trying the botanicals. Yeah. And congratulations, the cast finish. Yeah, uh, they are. They are good. Yep, yeah. and I'm glad. I'm glad the the guys who got their samples, and I know. St. Paddy's Day and the the, the the career service and so on and so forth. Um, they, they, I don't know. They just seem to be absolutely taking the hand out of people at the minute because everything seems to be delayed. But anyway, if you haven't got your samples, they're coming and sit back and uh, enjoy. Uh, Stacey McAllister. <clears throat> I, I, right. I'm going to make a wee confession. I sent her a, you've won. She didn't look at messengers, never got back to me. So we will try. Uh, the next time we're doing a tasting, Stacey, we'll, we'll get you there because <laughs> you, you missed out this time. I, I appreciate that some people don't don't spend as much time on social media as, well, certainly not as much as Justin does. <laughs> well, I have to. I have to. I know, man. I know. There you go. Uh, thanks a million, guys. Thank you very much, Barry. Anyone want more information, shoot him an email, barry at kennedycastlespirits.com. Simple as that. Yeah. There you go. Now, I told you we were going to run over, Justin. <laughs> well, well, we are going to run over because I want to go pa back and, and get to some of the comments earlier on uh, when people actually mentioned uh, about the... Uh, Pochi, okay. Yeah. So, Connor Ryan said, "Only Irish pochi is covered by the GI, not the term pochi itself." Unfortunately. Well, the only thing I would say about that is Caledonian is not covered by any protected thing by the Scotch Whiskey Association. Scotch whiskey is certainly PGA protected, but oh. when the SWA and and big heavy hitter like White and Mackay are taking umbrage at the use of Caledonian whiskey. Uh, I, th I think the Irish Whiskey Association could very easily do exactly the same by saying Potching is 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 Irish. Um, if, you, if, if, if they're sending out legal letters, if they're sending out legal letters um, about Potching or about Caledonian, then I think the Irish Whiskey Association could probably... Yeah, and there's uh, James Murray Doherty. The GI is Irish potching because other Celtic Wales nations claim potching before the GI was agreed. There you go. Yeah, well, uh, again, you, you, Canada's not a Celtic nation. I think there's, if you're going to go down that route, then the, 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 the PGA really isn't going to be worth the paper it's written on. And that's the truth. Because uh, in Japan, they just make it and say it's it's potching. Uh, and the, po the potching category in many ways, is going to be a key thing for Irish spirits moving on, I, I, I think. It is. And there's uh, Tr Trevor Watson it was saying it would go well with a barbecue steak. Uh, Honestly, I, I'm i really impressed with that blend. I mean, yeah. I'm really impressed with that. Yeah. And uh, Darren Party Marine, definitely one of your tomahawks, a big tomahawk steak on the bone with a nacho <laughs> so the fat doesn't run down. I'm going to go vegan just to annoy you, Justin. That's Ali what I'm going to steak. do. Ali I'm going, steak. I'm going plant steak. based. See the, next time, see the next time you're around my house, you're going plant based. I swear to God, there'll be any I meat in my house. I shorthorn cattle from Glenarm Castle. That's what I want. <laughs> All to myself, the entire, the entire thing. The entire thing. Yeah, diet going well, is it? The diet's going extremely well. <laughs> extremely well. Extremely well, indeed. Now, uh, we we have got another video to show. Uh, we and do. I, I need to find it here. So tell people where they can catch and subscribe to the, the podcast and all the rest of it. Now, Justin, Justin has done... Uh, Justin has done all of this. I, I like to always say, I like to always give credit where it's due because I wouldn't have a clue how you do any of this. That's the truth. Justin's always kept me right on this. But we are now on, we do the Facebook. It's, it's um, we go on YouTube. The YouTube stuff is there forever. So is Facebook. 
like like cockroaches, as Justin would say. But it's easier to find in YouTube because it's categorized and all. Yeah. Um, he then takes the audio, the sound files off, and you can listen to us on uh, Alexa. Alexa. I love doing that because Alexa. <laughs> so she's always crowding himself in case his wee thing goes. I haven't plugged it, so you can't you can't do anything to it. I haven't plugged it. So if you say Alexa, listen to the Irish whiskey review, up come uh, uh, us two, and occasionally people that actually know what they're talking about and people that are uh, interview interviewees, and we do the podcast on a Wednesday. So we're just we're we're doing lots of stuff. We're doing lots of stuff, guys. Now, this is our interview. It was recorded, our interview with Joe Devaney of the Crowley Distillery, another Ulster distillery. And as everyone knows, because I do, ulsterwhiskey.com. There's our private jet flying in. Uh, this is from. What are you reading that old book for, Marty? Are you thinking of opening a still somewhere in the Antrim Hills, are you? I don't, Justin, you think you could do better than this. I mean, look at look at the state of that. An old milk churn with a bucket, you know? I think <laughs> you think you could do better than that. And they can. We know a man that's doing better than that. It looks pretty swish, it doesn't does. it? It looks a little bit, it looks a little bit different. Um, we're joined by Joe Devaney from the Crowley Distillery down in County Donegal. Joe. Welcome. Gentlemen, how are you? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, um, I see the Donegal Poaching uh, book, um, uh, Maiden Manning uh, wrote uh, a comprehensive um, book on uh, right. the Donegal Poaching making. Uh, it's a thing that I know nothing of. Um, my father, who's still alive, knows nothing of, um, but we are sixth generation poaching makers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the, um, yeah um, and um, it's um, been 180 years since whiskey was last legally um, produced in Donegal by a man of the name of William Leetham out in Bohillion and Burt as if you ever take the drove from Latakenny to Derry you'll see that beautiful red stack um Halfway, uh, that is the last legal distillery. William Leetham um, made um, very fine whiskey, and um, we um, we hope to continue uh, the um, the style um, and the uh, tradition of uh, making whiskey. So we um, we we being three, uh, Conor McMenamin, Kieran Davis, and myself, um, yeah. we have come together. And we, for sense or foolish, as we don't know yet, but um, we have decided to, to um, and we have been underway since 2018, um, but way back in the day, in 2013, we started talking about the revival of Irish whiskey. Yeah. And considering uh, our position, could we be part of the story? So um, um, we um, approached Uthras, Uthras na Giltata, um, which is the um, enterprise um, organization uh, for West Nigal. Yeah. And we gave them our notional thought of um, <laughs> if they were to um, renovate what was the former Crawley Doll factory, um, if yeah. they were to renovate that, that we, from our resources, we'd uh, put together a distillery. And here we are. Um, uh, we are um, in production of um, whiskey um, at the rate of 10 casks a week. Um, so they, um, since last September, October time, um, and uh, with obviously the few teething problems, um, mostly ironed out now, um, yeah. we believe that we're going to have a very fine product and um, a very fine sipping whiskey in, um, in a short uh, number of years. So you started, the, the plan started back in 2013. Yes. And carried on through that. So I want to know how many years before that you were actually thinking about it for, Joe. How many years before 2013? It was really about uh, it? after a trip to Isla, um, to, yeah. to the island of Isla in the Hebrides. 
uh, that I recognized nice. that there was um, something big um, happening. Um, and it was driving past the Crawley factory. It just looked like a distillery. Um, the, um, but it certainly was influential, the trip to Isla. And yeah. Isla is the mecca of, um, of whiskey distilleries. It's, it's an island of 3,200 people, um, but has 10 whiskey distilleries and it pretty much oh. supports a lot of the local yeah. employment. Um, and that's where I, I, I'm, I'm local to Crawley. I'm from Ranafarshire, just over the road. Um, I have um, been involved in the Irish language uh, all of my life. Um, and um, it, 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 yes, you see the Crawley factory there. It's, it's, it's a beautiful image. Um, the, uh, it's, it's all about um, doing good uh, yeah. for the local area. No, well, it's, whenever you go to Isla, it is uh, very much a, a, an eye-opener when you see this really quite sparse populated very the weather's not great but yeah it's a powerhouse you were there at the same time as I was obviously <laughs> no I've been a couple of times but it is it's a real powerhouse of, of Scottish whiskey I mean it certainly it's a is multi-billion pound industry and you have this little rural remote the, the weather being what they call dreek you know it's always it's always sort of raining um, mm-hmm. but it's like the spiritual homeland of a multi-billion pound industry you know so you went to Isla you came back you decided okay we'll approach this we'll get the still we'll have a look at it um how did you how did you get that from the idea to actually starting to put the plan all together to 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 get the vision another step down the road well it it happened we were lucky uh, in that we happened upon um, a couple of guys that were a few years down the road further ahead uh, of us and um, pretty much copied their, copied their format. And the format was um, unique to ourselves, um, mm-hmm. I think. Um, we will be the first distillery that has no debt. Um, and that's because we didn't build the building. It's, we leased it from um, Udras. Um, we bought the equipment um, from our own resources and um, uniquely. And the equipment came from uh, the Cognac region in France. And yeah. what we have bought are, um, are uh, that they're really beautiful. I, I don't know if you've got an image that, there, but. Um, we, yeah. we do have <coughs> an image. This is uh, it's very like, unusual. Like an it's, alliance, still, Dave. it's absolutely beautiful um, craftsmanship. Um, they, um, mm-hmm. they, they are ex brandy, 1956 um, uh, copper pot stills. So, in the, in, 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 in the furthest uh, of, of the copper, uh, you'll see that is the actual still. Um, above my father's head is the pre warmer, and out yeah. of shot is the condenser. Yeah, and it's um, it's we, we've gone with the direct fired um, it's traditional style. It's a real throwback to the olden days, yeah. um, to have direct fired. And you see what looks like the onion bulb and the line arm, and um, mm. that there will create huge amounts of reflux and huge amount of uh, contact with the copper. Yeah, and uh, only the purest drop. Um, we strip everything off in that onion bowl and only the purest drop of alcohol will reach across into the condenser. And it's the, the distillation uh, happens where to distill means to, um, to boil, to change from liquid to, um, uh, to gas and to re-bring re, re it. We're re-bringing back down to the old traditional um, um, tub um, uh, worm, worm tub. Um, condenser yeah. and so um, we hope and truly do believe that we will have a very very pure um, pure uh, liquid here's one, here's one I made um, earlier this, this is um, obviously um, it, 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 and obviously you don't have the benefit of but um, it, 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 it oh don't it, do that <laughs> don't do that don't do that <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is a beautiful, malty, um, sweet, um, um, but very uh, aromatic. And then we have, uh, I'll, nope, nope. 
don't know if you can see that. Yeah, um, we can see yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah, can, that's yeah, and pure yeah. glass. Yeah, it's and it's emblazoned with the crawley uh, and the gold rim. Something. Gold um, rim. Yeah, now, so. you started distilling. Now, to be fair, you you guys have kind of went. There's a few people making really big names and making a lot of noise, but you guys have kind of went a little bit under the radar. Um, was that by choice or by? Oh, very much by design. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we probably want to say that we did it rather than that we're going to do it. Right. Good. Yeah. Uh, Is that because you don't want to give people false hope or false uh, promises? You just want to deliver it and that's it sort of thing? Yeah. Not alone that. Um, we have our tagline. Um, and I don't take away from anybody who is in what other, other space they're in, but we're in the space where if it says Crawley on the bottle, it is Crawley in the bottle. Okay. You can yep. trust uh, the authenticity of the product. Yeah, its Good. traceability will be from from grain to glass, and it's something that we're rather passionate about. Um, they um, and we're not doing this uh, terroir. Um, yeah. We, we don't really know enough about it. Um, yeah. But we certainly do know that. Uh, and that there um, photograph you're just after showing up there is is actually, uh, it is the field which our barley is grown in. And mm-hmm. that is William Leakham's uh, farm out in Bohillion, which is oh. where <laughs> whiskey was last. Uh, um, the last whiskey. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very that's, good. The, that's the authenticity of the product. No. You are very much in uh, the West Coast. Well, whenever you say the West Coast, you're about as, almost about as West as you can sort of get. Uh, the the weather up there must be an influence on what's going to happen as well in terms of storage and, and maturation. Yeah. Um, they, they, um, there was um, a study done way back. I don't know uh, the detail, but uh, they replicated the exact... Uh, distillation process in the south of France as they had in the, the highlands of Scotland and the whiskey tasted completely different. Uh, there's no doubt that the Wild Atlantic Way, which probably is on, um, will have an influence. We're sitting right beneath Grogan Mountain, beneath Errigal. Um, we're in the, um, we're, we're going to have um, a, um, a maritime um, climate for maturation. So I do think uh, it will bear influence um, and a very positive influence, I hope. Yes. Now, your master distiller is a man called Mayo. Now, Donegal and Mayo have a have a history. <laughs> <laughs> for, anyone who, for anyone who's not familiar with this, this is to do with uh, the GAA and and uh-huh. and, and uh, sport. But that your master distiller, Dr. Jack Mayo, has a background in astrophysics, which yes. I, quite, I, I I quite like the idea. You must have, there's dark skies down in Donegal as well. Uh, as long as our astrophysicist doesn't blow the whole place. <laughs> create, create a rocket. <laughs> as long as you're not rocket man. Um, yes, just come back on your uh, Donegal Mayo connection. My son-in-law is Mayo, so there's obviously uh, this great um, this great crack uh, at any time that the, the two counties meet. Um, but yes, Dr. Jack Mayo, he is um, uh, an astrophysicist. Uh, um, a mass distiller and has um, brought in massive um, um, insight uh, to our team and has uh, directed us along the way and uh, we're certainly very glad to have him. We also have um, um, Julio Diana. Uh, Julio is um, um, Brazilian and um, his background is in brewery um, just um, the old mill brewery and in um, making cachaça, which is um, um, a type of um, mead drink uh, in, well consumed in Brazil. Yeah. So, yeah, there you right. go. I think I've heard of it before, it's actually, new yeah. New to me. Uh-huh. So, how uh, well, I'm not being new to you when you come down to seals. But I've never come down. 
does he make those lovely sort of things that look like scotch eggs, but they're actually <laughs> rice balls covered in sort of breadcrumbs and deep fried that Brazilians do? They're lovely. Um, he's actually a, a, an accomplished um, um, cheesemaker and um, honey. That's uh, there his crafts. Yeah. Hold my keys. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a, you've got an expert team. You've got a yeah. beautiful location. Uh-huh. You've got a unique. Uh, wood fired or flame fired uh, stills. You, you seem to have a lot of the right ingredients for for uh, people to what people would really like. Now, you've only just started, so we're we're going to have to wait years before your products appear, or before your whiskey mm-hmm. appears. But people can buy into it now, can't they? Yes, um, we are. Um, well, we're actually well down the road, and what the um, uh, there are a number of um, founder casks that can be pre-purchased. Yeah. Um, we have, um, as a nod to William Leatham, it's 180 years since he uh, last uh, produced whiskey. And um, so we are pre-selling 180 um, casks um, of, of whiskey um, at the very inviting price of 6,600 euros. Um, they, um, they, uh, um, you can put your name on a cask mm-hmm. and um, what it does is it uh, um, it allows our, our business model, it, it allows us to, um, to raise uh, capital um, in advance um, of sales yeah. and um, it it's three years from the point of commencement uh, to the point of sale uh, before you can sell a whiskey, it's three years and one day. Um, in Scotland, is three years. In Ireland, is three years and one day. I think that was to better the Scotch. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but uh, they, um, yeah, uh, so um, 180 casks um, to be pre-sold. And um, we're down to the last um, 20-ish. Um, so if there's anybody out there amongst your audience who would like to um, pursue uh, yeah. that, um, do feel free. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 not alone are we creating um, a whiskey distillery. Um, we're also capturing and recording um, the socio-economic history of the area. Um, the building has been there since 1901. And what we want to do is tell the previous lives. We're merely the custodians of, yeah. of, of this building. Um, and but it initially was a carpet factory. It was an RIC barracks. Um, um, it was um, the famous Crawley Dolls factory. And um, it has created a lot of employment, a lot of um, stories around the place. And we want to tell that history uh, to the future generations. Now, you're in the Gale Tack region. You know, the, the, for anyone outside of Ireland who doesn't know where that is, it's region in Ireland that promotes the Irish Gaelic language. I take it that's going to be a feature, a fairly heavy feature in, in the, the distillery, the visitors area of it, I would say. Kinche, Tandelike, and Usage Gafoil, Goleidger, Siantor. It's a, a, mostly a, an Irish language speaking area. Mm-hmm. And um, we, um, uh, we want to acknowledge um, the language and yeah. uh, e- when you do come and see us, uh, you'll notice that all of the um, all of the signage, all of the story, Tagakrut, Chigelik, everything is through Irish um, and um, bilingual. Uh, but yeah, we have a, a it's an important um, part of our heritage which we want to record. Good, so it should be. Now, you say you're making ten barrels a week, so your production figures aren't going to be massive. You know, we're not we're not going to expect massive volumes, obviously. Uh, so you're going to rely on visitors. You're going to have to. There's going to be visitors. Is going to play a huge part in the in the story of this. Now, what's your visitor center going to be like? And can we arrive in on the airport down in Carrick Finn and come near you? Because that's beautiful. Don't be telling people so I've got a private Everybody jet knows you get, Your Playboy, the Playboy jet that parked outside Carrick. Carrick Fergus, um, not Carrick Fan. Uh, well, would you believe 
we do have a private jet. Um, <laughs> which is a, 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 a a Cessna 120, uh, 1937 uh, heritage um, two-seater, which um, Julio, um, our Brazilian uh, guy, um, regularly flies. And um, when you do come into Carrickfin, you will be able to see our Crawley emblazoned um, heritage uh, vintage uh, two-seater. And for those select few that um, want to have a, on a risk going off uh, up in the air, uh, 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 more than welcome. Um, Carrickfin has to be mentioned uh, as the um, the most scenic, most beautiful airport in the world. It's got that title and uh, rightly so because you're coming in over Golan, Touring, uh, coming into Carrickfin there. It's just absolutely beautiful. We're very proud, obviously, uh, of um, of where we come from. Um, Western Gaul is beautiful, and and um, I think that the visitor centre that you draw attention to, the um, it will be a celebration of the music, of the dance, of the storytelling, of all of what the area has to offer. And I think the liquid, the amber gold, and I see you've just thrown up the Crawley bottle uh, and the glass and on, on the Crawley River, the waterfall, the clock William and Chilney, everything the area has to offer. Um, we want to and capture and um, give that experience through the business centre. Yes, we will be totally reliant on many visitors coming and our product is um, we're going to produce 50,000 litres of pure alcohol, LPAs as it's called, mm -hmm. um, in, per annum, and, um, it, which is small, it's scarce, it's rare, mm -hmm. um, but we do believe it will be very well sought after, it will be very credible. Um, it'll be um, a, a thing that we want to be proud of and the amber liquid gold um, will be there for sipping and for telling many stories which ties to the area which is what whiskey's for and I keep trying yes. to tell Justin this it's, it's not for Justin to get drunk and start making bother for people listen I want to ask you more about these, these okay. stills because I, I've yeah. got a better picture of the stills there uh, that sort of shows it. How does how does this still differ okay. from other stills? There, um, focus through. Well, what's not in the frame there um, is all of the brew house. What you're looking at in the, that picture there is the distillation area. Okay, so um, but um, we've prior to coming over to the copper pots, we'll have made our beer. So our beer is at eight to nine percent. Um, it's not uh, a, a very drinkable beer because it doesn't have hops. But we're not yeah. finishing um, with that product. We're, what we're doing now is we're coming over to the middle, middle the pre-warmer, and we're then dropping down into the still. And all we're doing, all of the beer is made, um, all of the whiskey is made in the brew house. All we're doing in this process here is extracting the water. And um, water um, boils at 100 degrees, alcohol boils at 78 degrees. So prior to coming to boil point, our alcohol is rising through that line arm. And uh, okay. yeah, so they, uh, and all that's left behind is the water. So all we're doing is condensing down and condensing down twice. You see that we have mm -hmm. uh, the front still and then the back still. By the time it comes to the back still, we're looking at 63.9% alcohol. Um, so they, um, unfortunately, I, I should have sent through a few more photographs uh, to allow you to see the full process. But um, when you're coming visit us, I'll talk you through it. You can do your video and do your- we can, Oh, we'll get, once, once we get out of the COVID madness, me and Justin will take a run down and we'll get Julio to pack us up in the plane. Listen, I'm only coming because I want one of these things. I want one <laughs> of these. Look at that yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Well, where, where, where would you get that? Where, where else would you get that? That's fantastic. It's it's probably worth more than a bottle of uh, whiskey, actually. Some of them probably are now. If if our if our uh, whiskey is as successful as the Crawley Doll um, and and making her journey around the globe, we'll be very very happy um, uh, because the, the the wee Crawley Doll is all yeah, around yeah. the world. They are. They are indeed. Joe, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and I'm glad that we've moved on from this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's done it all. And well, 
Um, Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure and uh, look forward to seeing you in person. Listen, take care and thanks very much. Go kid me, my gift. Slant. Slant it. I just slant it. So, what a, st- what a story that is, Marty. What a nice guy. You know what I mean? I, I, I love the fact he, he went over to Isla, saw that this rural community, this very Spartanly populated place, uh, loads of jobs, loads of money coming in, loads of revenue, lo- all of that kind of stuff, and thought, Donegal, Donegal, we could do that in Donegal. We could, do, we could be part of that story in Donegal. And a downy one, you know. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're ta- you're talking about all this um, industry and business, and it, lots of these guys start this up and and faced when they, the key point out of all of that when he said they have no debt, right? What does that mean? They put their own money into it, didn't borrow money off anybody. So you know? it's great to see that actually. Here, yeah, Claire, who does uh, social media for and other things, uh, marketing wise, I think at the, at the Crawley Distillery says, Sister Stuart, you can email hello at the Crawley Distillery.com <coughs> for more information. Yes, yeah, that's the link. And uh, I do like it when people comment. You've got about uh, nine minutes left in the show tonight. If you want to ask any questions in the last nine minutes, fire away, just comment, like, and share. Uh, tell your friends. Stuart Quail says, no, them stills are very interesting. Yeah, and and the thing about it is, it's they're coming from cognac stills. They're proper Jules Verne's and very cool. Yeah. <laughs> they James, are, James, they are. They're, they're I mean, punk, they're, steampunk. That's it. It's kind of like that, and they, they got them over from from France. They that cognac kind of pre warmer in through worm top out copper, copper, copper the whole way. And you have to you have to say. These are guys that have invested their own money to something that they believe in, and they've come up with a really cool idea with with the stills. I thought, right, okay, they brought in a guy from Brazil who now see whenever they said he's a he's a cheese making expert, mm-hmm. and you think, oh, oh, brilliant, you know, Justin's thinking fondue and all that kind of stuff, right? No, the thing about it is. All of that is still to do with fermentation and 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 bacteria and all bacteria that. and how how all that works. So, yeah, a, a really really interesting distillery. Who, but again, a bit like Michael with the, the the whiskey, they've slipped under the radar and just sort of keep keep doing the the the, the thing. And in a couple of years' time, they're going to come out. <laughs> They're going to come out with some really, really good stuff. Crawley. Yeah. We have the exact name there. They're called Alembic Pot Stills from Cognac. They are. They're Alembic Pot Stills from, from the Cognac region. Yeah. The, I mean, if you see how they're made up, I mean, the likes of Hennessy, it comes through on a pre warmer. So it comes up, the, the whiskey gets heated up, fired up, and it comes through and it pre warms the whiskey and then it comes down in. And it's a, it's a really, really different sort of design and cool way of doing things. It's kind of environmentally friendly in ways too. Uh, but the, the whole idea is copper, copper, copper. And You said a lot of these other distilleries are going back to direct fire because they've tried no, steam and other no, things. No, no, no. I didn't say a lot of them are going back. Some, some. There are some of them. What I said was the likes of Glen Farkless the experiment that we steam and then went back to, to direct fire because they said didn't work. Springbank have a direct fire still. Our, our friends in Cologne, they they went from day one. They said they said direct fire was the way they were going to go. Uh, I think there's a bit in this, to be honest. That that Mayard reaction is it's again it's that heat and caramelization and turning sugars into caramelizing sugars and browning sugars there's people out there a lot <laughs> a lot better explaining all that than I am but I think direct fire you'll, you'll start to see a lot more people starting to use this or convert to it I think at some point at some point okay. um, my 
What about that for a week? Can we fit any more people in? It's it's almost like the one show for whiskey, no, except so, it's three times the length. I and do five apo- times I, as good. I do apologize, by the way. I, I've always said from sort of day one that we should be doing um one hour shows. Because there's, there's people out there do two and a half hours of them talking to their friends, and it's just a bit much. But I, I'm, I'm at least people know I'm not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, it's you're like the enemy within. <laughs> you know? but, but no, the thing about it is, we had sort of three sex. I always like doing the new stuff because it's nice to talk about stuff that's happening. Then we had the whiskey tasting, and then Joe was, I mean, he was just a lovely, nice guy who wants to do his bit and is investing, is, is putting his money where his mouth is and wants to create sort of jobs down in Crawley and do all that kind of stuff, you know. So, yeah, I, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Right, okay, uh, lovely stuff. Uh, Stuart Quayle saying, great night, boys. Uh, William saying, what a great night. Uh Trevor Watson saying thank you for another great night. Well worth the listen. A lot packed in. Yes, sometimes less is more, but uh, when it all happens in one go and every week in whiskey seems to be even crazier than the next, <laughs> you have to do it. And uh, we, we can't, we don't want to say about next week, but uh, if you haven't watched the show before, you should watch it next week. The next week's watch, a special one. And you should click send like share subscribe you should email all your friends the link you should tell them all and you should definitely watch it okay and it's not because we're trying to buy likes with a prize all right we don't buy likes justin we don't buy likes you should watch it you should watch it next week because uh, next week's guest is good very good extremely good like fantastically good like she is yeah very good very good indeed. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's Stanley Sung saying we definitely need a trip, d- trip to Donegal. Uh, Michael Matthews, every day is a school day. Uh, Mark Kerr, sometimes more is more. Yes. Do you want more for less or less for more? That's what <laughs> I tell people when I'm trying to sell them stuff. I'm still uh, stuffing the doubt or blame, to be honest. Well, I'm trying to save it. I'm trying no. to save it because I'm going to have that porter afterwards that Mark gave us. Linda Cox is saying thanks a lot for no- another great night. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Good, good, good. If you oh. want to listen to what uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, that's fabulous. It I, is. I, that's really it good. Really good. Really if, good. If you want to listen in detail to what Joe Devaney said, the audio only version is going to be out on Wednesday on our podcast. Tonight's podcast is is going to be the cut down version of the first hour of the show. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's not Pamela Anderson, unfortunately. No, it's not. It's not Pamela Anderson. Oh, no, Pam, he's talking about Pamela Anderson the time you were in California. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Michael Matthews. Justin, try, Justin tried to drown four times. When he was in I threw myself off. I threw myself off Santa Monica Pier. Or four Santa times. Four times. <laughs> no, I didn't. Really. <laughs> what he actually did is he went into the, uh, when it was in Santa Barbara or Santa Monica, he went into the, uh, the, the, uh, Telsa showroom and didn't order one because <laughs> he couldn't afford a hundred grand for the, the gold wing seven door one in white with the big screen the size of the screen I'm looking at. No, I couldn't afford it. No, there you go. Uh, so thank you very much for watching tonight. Uh, uh, it's been great. Tonight's guest, who did we have on first live? We have Porek from the Mickle Distillery. Uh, we'll get t- we'll get caught up with them and get a much more, much more interesting. Uh, in depth chat with them. Talk, yeah. In depth talk. We just wanted to say hello to them guys tonight because I mean momentous week for them laying down the first whiskey. Uh we had we we had Joe on and yeah. He's I mean, saying thanks. He's actually on his his wife's tablet. He's on his wife's tablet. There you go. Joe here. Thanks guys. There you go. Thank no, you. No, I, I, I mean when when guys put their money where their mouth is, it's a real statement. And yeah. Fabulous, you know. We had Barry was commenting there the Kennedy Castle stuff. Well, we knew it was going to be okay, but it's it's virgin on the exceptional that that. I I I'll, I'll I'll just stay out. Uh, be honest. I think the Dapper Blend is 
was was exceptional, if I'm honest. What you look at a ten, Marty? Maybe a nine. At the price point, it's at yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think I, I mean I'm I'm a massive massive Black Bush fan. Everybody knows that I'm a big Black Bush fan because I think the quality of that for the price is at absolutely. absolutely. Um, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, there you go. I, I could good, see me. It? I could see. I could see me switching horses here very quick. That's the truth. That's how good this is. Okay. I'm being honest. All right. I'm being honest about that. Okay. Good. Good. There you go. That's all right. There you go. Start I feel like we're in we're in the RT weather for forecast there. But uh, great stuff, Joe. Uh, all the best. All right. Guys, uh, speak to you during the week. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Good night.